it so we stop for a while to talk about those filter fine modules let's put a more elementary exercise this is about local fields on the tension meter lift so let k be a local field let's say we put q finite field to be the residue field of this local field k so it's perfect and here we require to be finite also let's say it's p to the power f so p is the characteristic of this residue field then for any the residue field prove that there exists a unique element in the real integer let's use the notation later will be called meter lift bracket of it in real integer of okay such that satisfy the following condition so you have to show the existence and the uniqueness firstly this c is indeed a lift this bracket is indeed a lift of xi. Secondly, we require still satisfies the condition x to the power q equals x. It's in particular the yeah, rules of unity when it's not zero. Thirdly, Moreover, for any let's see and eta in the residue field, the Tashmir lift of their multiplication is the multiplication of their Tashmir lift, which means if you think of this as a functor or a operator, this is a multiplicative. Okay, so we prove this. So what we do is we're going to use Hensel's lemma. So we consider this fx equals x to the power q minus x. That's polynomial ring over k. So notice it's reduction modulo uniformizer is power q minus x in the residue field coefficient polynomial ring and so by finite field c is in this finite residue field if and only if it is root of this f bar Notice that this derivative of this f bar. So it's the same thing, just the derivative of this f bar is minus one, so not zero. And so we can use inside the lemma. We will recall inside the lemma very quickly. And so the lemma apply that. There is a unique element, let's call it C bracket. This is our this is our construction of this C bracket tension meter lift such that firstly F F is the lift of F bar equals zero. And it is still a root of that polynomial which means Xi bar to the power q equals xi bar. Secondly, this xi bar is indeed a lift of xi. Lastly, why it's multiplicative? Notice.
notice that C times eta bar and C bar times eta bar. Both roots are both roots. x to the power q minus x and with same reduction modulo pi k And so by the uniqueness of Hensel's lemma. They must be the same. So we wait for a while. Why? They're both roots of x to the power q minus x. So let's think. Firstly, c to the power q equals c eta to the power q equals eta and this characteristic p and so c times eta to the power q this is the same as c to the power q eta to the power q and so c times eta and this is also tiny u c times eta is also a root of this for the similar reasons tiny u c times eta bracket is a root of x to the power q equals x Right, so both and this reduction is this. Right, and the reduction of C times eta is C times eta modulo P. Okay, nothing here. So let's stop the proof. So let's recall the pencil's lemma. So several versions, let's recall. This is the amount that is used here. And then I left you a question to think about, uh, which is related with wood ring. So someone might ask, why do we care about this uh, representative of the residue, elements of the residue field? Because basically, uh, all the roots of x to the power q equals x in fq. Actually, we find we find a representative in OK, right? The the the, the representatives we find are those Tashmir leaves on that one. But but indeed, this this is just one representative of those, right? For example, let's take an easier case. F P. Then there are zero, one, two, and P minus one bar. And then attachment lift gives you a representative in ZP. When you mod P, it gives you back. But notice we are not taking this one. Although it works, we're not taking this one. What we are taking is attachment lift of zero, attachment lift of one, attachment lift of P minus one. And indeed, they must not be this one, two, three, four, P minus one, because those are all roots of p minus one roots of unity, except this zero. And in particular, which means their multiplicative structure have finite order, while those ones, their multiplicative uh, structure has infinite order, right? They're totally different. So why do we care about this tension variable? Why do we want this tension variable? The reason is that, the first reason is is multiplicative. It's the only one, only representative such, such that uh, some conditions are satisfied. So this one, many representatives satisfied. Mm. But when it comes to this one, not too many. Okay, not to mention this one, multiplicative structure. 
So my question left you to think about is, what's the relation? between let's take an example let's first take example easy example take example k equals fp what's the relation between the tensioner lift from fp to zp uh, we have to succeed to its tensioner lift by solving by solving the x to the power p equals x right and the one more abstract using with ring this is isomorphic to the p there's also a testimonial lift which is just uh, the element of this ring just x and then zero everywhere what's the relation between these two to understand the question what's the relation let me put x here What's the relation between x bar here and x bar here? As we actually, I use, already use the same notation for it, okay? But you know what I'm asking. So basically, if we have this isomorphism, so let's look at this. We know this is multiplicative. So if x to the power p equals x, actually this implies x to the power p equals x. And so basically, this should already tell you that and of course, uh, not to mention that this always come back here. This is a section when you mod P. So this is already telling again by hands of lemma. You could think of this as polynomial in ZP, right? And so this again uh, in ZPX. Again, the Hensel lemma will tell you that X bracket in ZP is the unique element such that 1, 2, 3 again, according to X, mod uniformizer. Secondly, so the power p equals x. Thirdly, uh, x y equals x y. So in this sense, you should see that this should exactly be the same thing. Which means that this one, if when you use the isomorphism with the p, this should correspond exactly to this element. As you could see, this not only works here, it could work more abstractly for for, for example, okay, perfect, characteristic P. Uh, at least, let's say, finite fields, any finite field, right? The same argument works. But even when it's not finite fields, you cannot use the classical argument. That's like what I did at the beginning of this video. Then still you could use this powerful abstract thing to define on WR, which is attached meter lift for R. Not even not necessary characteristic P, you could still reasonably define this map. This is always multiplicative. The reason is that the reason is that uh, x. So you know, in the wittering, the multiplication can be complicated, but when only the first component is non-zero, then this is very easy. Just this one, so it's multiplicative. This is always a multiplicative. So finally, let's, as I promised, I, I want to recall the uh, Hensel's lemma. So one version of the Hensel's lemma is as follows. I'm sorry if I have misspelled Hensel.
that K be a complete Nash medium field. Normal field, Nash medium normal field. Let fx in serenity integer coefficient point of marine alpha zero be an element of this field k be an element such that f alpha zero its norm is less than f alpha zero derivative norm square then the following sequence alpha i plus one defined to be alpha i minus f alpha i over f alpha i derivative for i bigger or equal than zero converges in k to a root of fx. So this is very like very like the Newton approximation, but for Newton approximation we never know its converges. But the Hensel dilemma tells you that it will converge. So this is this construction here is exactly Newton approximation, but the Hensel dilemma is telling you that when Coefficient a complete field with non Schmidin norm, then it's always converged. And so this is giving you some sufficient condition for existence of roots of polynomial with coefficients a complete field with non Schmidt norm. So not this one we use it directly. So let's say corollary. Suppose we start with polynomial the residue field coefficient as what we did in the exercise today, so non-zero and let element let's call it the alpha bar in the residue field be a simple root of this f bar x which means this element when you compute the der derivative right it's not not zero and then let fx be any lift to the rim integer coefficient root point of the ring be such that so it's a lift Modulo of the uniform uh, yeah. And then the result is there is this unique, that's the uniqueness, come, come from the uniqueness root alpha in OK of this fx such that alpha bar congruent to alpha mode uniform minor. That's the corollary. Okay, so finally, before we stop, let me also mention something. So let's say, mm, 
let me give a name for the exercise so let's say actually this is you could think this second exercise for today we have give the answer the beginning is the first exercise for today then lastly let's give me a third exercise so third exercise talk about in this uh, let's say w of r with r perfect perfect terrain which means the forbidness is surjective is there any element here any element here i could write it into a special form i claim i could write it into a form p to the power i times the tension meter lift of some xi let me don't use xi let me call it um, some xi I'm, I'm afraid this is not a standard notation so i mean just for simplicity some yi okay how do you do that so what i'm doing is just notice notice Characteristic P, sorry. So notice firstly, Frobenius, Wolschibon, because Wolschibon, Frobenius equals multiplication by P. Okay. And secondly, Frobenius on this, when this characteristic of R is positive P, then the action is very precise. This is just raising to the piece power component wisely, which is very nice. And secondly, this is easy to describe. This is just shift by one position. And then altogether, now I'm going to rewrite our x as x0, 0, zero everywhere, plus uh, x1 you see I'm just basically what I'm doing is I'm using I'm writing as tachymeter lift of x0 plus Voshibon of tachymeter lift of x1 plus Voshibon squared tachymeter lift of x2 etc and then I'm going to take a piece root of x1 and then apply Frobenius to it. Let me see. I'm claiming this is this equal this because for me this is just reason to the piece power. I'm taking p roots and then reason to piece power it goes back to x1. But notice this is now p. Similarly, I'm doing this to uh, f square with square, and I'm taking power roots and then this is just because f v equals we have the commutative this is just p square and so finally this is just x0 plus p x1 1 over p plus p square x2 1 over p square plus x square and so finally it's really indeed with the form p to the power i sum x I p to the power over i root of the unit. I'm taking arbitrary one. For um, if it's characteristic p, it's surjective. It must also be injective, so it's really automorphic. So there is a unique one in some sense. Okay, so we are done here.